My name is Sofia Del Sante and I'm the head of innovation at ProChile, which is the trade and promotion agency of the Chilean government. Today I'm here with all of you to tell you a little bit about the Chilean ecosystem and of course how uh, as a country we've been uh, trying to support innovative companies with their global gro growth at the same time as we uh, fight COVID and find solutions of course to the challenges that this pandemic has brought. Uh, so to start I'm going to give you a quick overview of what is the Chilean Chilean ecosystem, uh, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do at ProChile to support these innovative companies. Um, it's important to mention that uh, the Chilean ecosystem has around 10 to 15 years. Uh, it started with the creation of a governmental program called Startup Chile um, that wanted to uh, build in Chile a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship that can help Chile go to the next level in terms of competitiveness and of course of uh, aggregated value of uh, the Chilean affairs. So in that sense, the government created this program uh, that now it's it's been um, implemented in different countries around the world in order to boost ecosystem and support uh, local startups and scale-ups. To give you a quick overview of the ecosystem in numbers, we can say that the government supports thir around 1,300 startups and scale-ups every year uh, with funding. We have around 60 venture capital supporting uh, the growth of local startups and scale-ups. And last, only last year, we have we had a lot uh, around 40 investment deals that were closed in 2019. Also, we uh, can mention that uh, the collaboration between different in entities in Chile is one of the key uh, reasons of the growth and rapid growth of the Chilean ecosystem. We have more than 130 uh, entities between incubators, accelerators, co-works, uh, venture capitals and mentors that are supporting the growth uh, of these companies and also also, it's important to mention that Chile, um, it's uh, one of the countries with most fair trades agreements of the world, uh, and that of course supports the international growth of these innovative companies. Uh, the Chilean uh, state, it's very committed with the growth of innovation, and that's why we also have an R&D law that supports companies that want to uh, innovate inside uh, their, their organizations and uh, we do have tax incentives for those companies that um, wants to innovate uh, inside. Um, it's important to also mention that uh, nowadays Chile can be um, identified as a platform uh, for companies that want to enter and want to exit Latin America. Uh, in the last years, we've been recognized as one of the most competitive countries in Latin America, one of the best entrepreneurship ecosystems, and of course, we've been also recognized as one of the most innovative countries and based places to do business uh, within the region. Uh, so uh, with that, we would say this is a great place for entrepreneurs that want to use the country to grow uh, globally. And it's important to also mention that uh, there's a huge collaboration between the private and the public sector. And of course, there's a huge collaboration among organizations from uh, the public se sector that work together in order to support uh, these innovative companies with the different needs that they have uh, once they are growing. So we have organizations like Startup Chile that helps companies with seed funding and growth. Uh, we have Corfo, but also we have ProChile and Invest Chile, uh, which are in charge of uh, the international relation also with investors and uh, with different ecosystems in order to boost our ecosystem and build the global network from Chile. Uh, I think it's important to mention also that Chile has a visa tech uh, that it's to bring high quality fund talent to the country and of course this also support the growth of international companies that want to use Chile as their platform and their base. Um, in terms of uh, how we've been fighting COVID and supporting companies in a rough period, I think it's important to mention that it's got, that the government, it's uh, been working in four key areas. The first one, of course, it's financial aid uh, with public credits and state guarantees credits to facilitate the access to uh, funding for companies that we understand are having a rough time. But also uh, the government has created tax incentives and payment facilities for forgiveness of interest and fines in order to support the companies that, of course, um, were affected by the crisis and of course their sales are not the same as before uh, the COVID uh, 
crisis. And in terms, of course, of digitalization, as the whole world would be uh, going through a huge challenge with this, uh, going 100% online from one day to the other. And in that sense, the government has been supporting these companies with different training and support uh, for SMEs to work on a more digital um, scenario. And of course, to be prepared for a, a rapidly growing digitalization of uh, business. Uh, last but not least, of course, the government is highly committed with the growth of innovation in this rough period. And this is why uh, we keep having innovation equity free funds for companies with innovative solutions. But also uh, the government created a fund of around three million dollars uh, in grants for uh, COVID uh, solutions and COVID research and development. And this is, of course, to find solutions to uh, the key challenges that we are facing globally because uh, of this pandemic. Um, if we go to, to uh, the role of Protile and how we've been supporting um, a, a startups and scale-ups. Of course, it's been a challenge to do uh, international trade and um, to work in the growth of uh, companies in a period where everyone needs to be at home. Uh, but we, what we've been trying to do is to keep on the strategy, changing sometimes the way we do things, but not the why we do those things. And that's why we are been trying to support these companies by building networks and finding partners all over the world to act as a bridge and connect these innovative Chilean companies uh, with the different st stakeholders of the global ecosystem. We've been also working um, on global visibility and how we can um, let the whole world know about the Chilean innovations that are rapidly growing. We've been also building supporting tools for companies uh, in their expansion uh, phase. And in that sense, we've been working to build knowledge and uh, growth uh, of skills in terms of uh, the preparation that companies need uh, to go global. We've been working on uh, exploration, prospection and market validation initiatives. And of course, we've been also helping with soft landing of companies uh, that need to enter new markets, uh, even though that it's sometimes hard to help uh, these companies in a period like the one we are, we are going through right now. Uh, we are, have been trying to keep supporting these companies and we are very committed with the growth of uh, Chilean innovation in new markets. And in that sense, of course, uh, with COVID, one of the first actions we took was to identify Chilean innovations uh, that had solutions for COVID and what we We've been doing it to connect this Chilean innovations with the demands of different markets. If we have solutions that have been helping in Chile, uh, of course, we think that those solutions can also work for other countries. And what we've been doing is to connect these Chilean innovations with the needs of other markets and the demands of other markets. That how uh, COVID diagnosis kits and, and softwares and hardwares to mon monitor um, the growth of the virus uh, are being applicated in different countries uh, besides Chile. Uh, we've been also trying to grow the visibility of the solutions internationally. We understand that uh, one of the uh, most challenging things was education and that's why we've been uh, giving a lot of visibility for edtech solutions that we have in Chile and that are great solutions that um, have uh, global, global uh, sol solves global problems and that we think uh, might be useful, of course, to uh, different stakeholders in different markets. Uh, last but not least, we've been specializing the support uh, that we give to companies that need to access to information networks and supplies in uh, a rough uh, time and what we've been doing is trying to work with them in order to understand what are their urgent needs and uh, try to support them uh, through our 56 commercial offices that are all spread around the world. Um, of course, uh, we've not only been helping the companies that are uh, facing COVID um, challenges, but also we've been working with great Chilean innovations uh, that need to go global because for these types of companies going global, it's not an option, it's a need. And in that sense, we knew that besides COVID, we needed to keep supporting these companies with their expansion. So what we did, it's trying to change the way we do things, but not why we do it. And in that sense, uh, we, we've been moving everything to online initiatives. We've been doing a lot of marketing sites and skills buildings to prepare companies to go global, but also 
We've been connecting these companies with opportunities in different markets through pitch online pitch sessions to raise capital or to access soft landing services. And we also managed to change one of our key programs, which is Go Global, that it's a program that supports companies in uh, four different markets that are Peru, Colombia, Mexico, and the US. Uh, we usually help 40 companies enter those markets with a physical soft landing. And of course, this year we had to adapt that program to a digital scenario. So I think that um, when there's a will, I, we can say there's a way. And uh, besides the challenges that we've been um, facing because of COVID, there's also a lot of opportunities to change the way we do things in order to support uh, companies with their international growth and also find new ways to do things and to connect with different markets. Uh, one of uh, the positive things about, um, I would say, the crisis is that we are together, uh, all, all of us together today, and uh, we are in many different countries and that um, wouldn't be possible because we were in a phase where we needed to do things digitally because uh, the COVID scenario put us in, in this um, in this occasion. But um, I think, of course, that there are opportunities uh, to uh, build new things for collaboration and what is what we've been trying to do in ProChile in order to support uh, our Chilean innovative companies. So uh, thank you so much. And of course, thank you to uh, LATAM Startups for uh, the invite. I'll be pl pleasure to keep in touch with all of you. It's a pleasure to be here in the Latam Startups Conf. Uh, I am Nicola Rodriguez. I am part of Ruta in Medellin, that is the innovation district of the city of Medellin, Colombia. First of all, I want to divide my presentation in three topics. First, I will talk about Medellin, our entity, Ruta N, which is our objective. Then I will talk about how we are developing projects to support startups locally and also startups from all over the world that we can support them connecting with the ecosystem. And then I will present you about the soft landing program that we are the only city in Latin America that has a soft landing program to support startups that are in the world to connect and to invest here in Medellin. So first of all, Medellin. Uh, Medellin is the second biggest city of Colombia. Colombia is located in the north part of South America. Um, Medellin uh, is the second biggest city. We have approximately 4 million people. But Medellin has something different. Uh, 30 years ago, uh, in Medellin, the public sector, academic sector, and all the companies began working together. Why? Because they want to articulate all the projects to really generate a change to the city. So that's why uh, in that part, in that moment, the economy of Medellin was, was based on manufacturing. And as we are in the middle of the mountains and uh, we have a lot of people that is very servicial and they're focused on uh, working with services, they said, OK, let's create a public policy. Let's create an entity from the government that can support the change of the economy of Medellin for, that was based on manufacturing to services, science and technology. So uh, that's why in Medellin, Rutaene was created in 2009 and we are a public entity. We are part of the mayor's office. We, uh, our principal objective is generating an economy development based on science, technology and innovation projects. So how we make that? We support local companies to promote and to create and to develop new innovation projects. We work with the academy that they can really understand how is moving this te technological market. We support the government to create public policies that can really generate uh, new employment based on services. And we are the articulator of all this ecosystem. And specifically, how we are adapting to COVID. You know, we were working normally, making all of our uh, businesses and networking um, normally that we have a big complex in the north part of the city. 
and COVID arrives. What we do immediately, what we generate are projects that we can really support the city to prepare to COVID. So that's why, for example, we were working with two companies from the region to create the ventilators. Immediately, we make a project that we can really receive money from the private sector to create and to make uh, some projects to support hospitals that they can really receive the people from COVID. So we were the leaders of all these articulation and that's why doing that in this moment, Medellin is the only city in Latin America that has an innovation district. That the GID, that is the Global Network of Innovation Districts, uh, allow us to be part of them and we are doing that. This is a general introduction about Glutaene. Now I will tell you how we support startups to connect with our ecosystem and also the local startups to grow. You know, digital transformation began a lot of years ago, but we have a lot of companies that are from manufacturing, financial companies, from, uh, and they are not using these technologies. So what we do here is we have a network of 4,500 companies from the city that we support them and teach them what is digital transformation, how they can use these technologies to adapt and to change. And now with COVID, it's very necessary. So every day we are working with local companies, with startups, that they can really understand these new technologies and we connect them with events that we are teaching them how they can use it, connecting them with investors that can support them to grow and to scale. And also we have some acceleration programs internally in Rutaine that we are doing that. In this moment, all the things that we are doing are virtually and uh, we have another project that is very, very nice that we call Sun. Sun is an innovation platform. It's an open innovation platform where we are working with the local companies to create challenges. For example, you're a manufacturing company. You need a technological company that wants to develop a new platform. So we support them making the challenge and all the companies, not only Medellin and Colombia, can work with this challenge and if they think they have the technology and the possibility to work, we make these connections. Also, for example, we are creating and we have a network of investors. Medellin has one of the biggest uh, angels uh, investment networks that are really, really big and we are connecting these local startups when they are planning to scale to connect with these investors. So as you see, we are making a lot of things. What, how, if you are a company that you are in Canada, in Mexico, all around the world, uh, how we can support you connecting with our ecosystem? We have a soft landing program. This soft landing program is for companies that are technology based. It's very necessarily that you are working with these new technologies. Uh, how we support you connecting? First of all, if you are looking for talent, that is, I think, the first and the most important characteristic that we have here the quality of the talent. In Rutaene, we have a special program to connect you with, with 51 tech communities that we have of all the technologies. We have the biggest JavaScript community of, in Latin America. We have one of the biggest blockchain communities. So we support you connecting with the local talent. And we have an HR team that is supporting you to find the local talent that you require, to understand the cost, to un to understand how you can work with them in terms of culture, because you know, Colombia has very different culture from other countries. So we support you connecting with the talent, recruiting, and also supporting you to scale the talent. Depending on, on your needs, we can plan for you a special program to find the talent in the short term and in the long term. That's the first way you are doing. The second way that we do it is with the networking. As I told you, we have a lot of events a lot of platforms to connect with the local businesses. We have also uh, communities. For example, we have a digital transformation community that we have the leaders of the big companies that are from here. Imagine four of the biggest companies of the country, four of the top five are here in Medellin. We have financial companies, we have banks, we have manufacturing companies. And in this community, you can connect and see which things are they needing to their companies and we can connect with them. We make events before, before COVID, they were 
presents, even three daily. Now we have a lot of virtual events that we connect you with all these projects, with all the ecosystem, with all these businesses that we are working. So that's the invitation. If you want to come here, you will have an ally that will connect you with all these projects and also being part of our community. Third, if you are exploring the option to put your office here in Latin America, specifically Medellin, we have a big complex that you can be uh, there with offices that are adaptable depending on the people you need and you can go there. Of course, in this moment, a lot of companies are working remotely, but uh, in the near future, you can come here and you can be there in the center of innovation of Medellin. And fourth, also, if you're looking for capital, uh, we can connect you. The good thing is that with all this ecosystem, with all this support, we had supported more than 360 companies from 32 countries to connect with the ecosystem, to support them, to connect them with the talent. So uh, I hope that you can really understand what we are doing in Ruta N. The invitation is for you to come here to our city, to work together, to connect you with the ecosystem, and also to be here and to put your offices here in Medellin, not only to work with the local businesses, also to export and to be the center for the Latin American market, that we have a very good geographical position to be here. Thanks a lot, and I hope that we can see you soon here in Medellin. Hello, my name is Isaac Lucater. I am part of the Eugenio Garza Laguerre Entrepreneurship Institute at the Tech of Monterrey in Mexico. Today, I have the opportunity to talk to you about the actions as a university in Mexico came to the forefront in this new normality caused by the pandemic, primarily to support the country's entire entrepreneurial ecosystem. Tech de Monterrey is a multi-campus university with 77 years. We have 26 campuses in different cities and 18 international offices. Our national presence gives us the capacity to support many efforts to overall the country. As an institution, we participate in different ways. For example, Tech Salud, or Medicine School, supports at all levels with reliable information for the public and private leaders for the best decision making. With our engineering school and other universities and research centers, we participate in the generation of the first fan manufacturing and design in Mexico. Also, we adapt our educational model to a virtual one. And now in a flexible hybrid model impacting 93,000 students, 10,000 teachers with high academic quality and experience all over Mexico. Tech de Monterrey is an entrepreneurial university. Our vision for 2030 is leadership, innovation, and entrepreneurship for human flourishing. Eugenio Garza Laguera Institute is created in 2003 to orchestrate the Tech de Monterrey strategies and platforms in entrepreneurship. Our entrepreneurial model consists in a letter that goes like this. First, we want to inspire, then discover, validate, launch, grow, and scale. This model tries to help at the entrepreneur at all levels. At 2019, we have been recognized by Princeton Review in the eighth place of the Entrepreneurial University's ranking. As we all know, the pandemic caused by the COVID-19 led us to reimagine how we could continue to generate value and impact for our entrepreneurs, but now without the physical contact of everyday life. This situation led us to transform the platforms to virtual, being able to impact entrepreneurs across the country. Our platform for entrepreneurs is called TechLean, which consists of three stages, Explore, Lounge, and Road. Explore is a six-week program where we help entrepreneurs to validate if their, their idea has the market validity. The second one is Techlin Launch, is for those who already have a minimum value product can develop team, product, and market. This is an accelerated incubation program of four months and then lead growth is a program for startups that already have investment or are participating in corporate incubation process. All this program goes to a virtual model. In addition to our TechLink platforms, we create a platform to impact the country's entire entrepreneurial community through webinars, whose main objective is to provide entrepreneurs information and tools 
in all over Latin America. As you can see on the slide, our numbers are really, really, really good. We impact participants all over Latin America, teachers and students, entrepreneurs. More than 80 sessions for at least 10 campuses around Mexico are transmitting or were transmitting and impacting more than 10 countries. In addition to being a platform for the entrepreneurs, we become their strategic allies to reinvent their business models and take advantage of opportunities within the pandemic. Another of our platforms to support Latin American entrepreneurial ecosystem is in festival that will be held virtually from November 2 to 6. During the pandemic, we created space for entrepreneurs to present their products and services and networking events and talk with international entrepreneurship leaders. We have two models in talks and in the day. As a university, we learn that there is more intelligence in the group than in the most intelligent ones. Playing as a team with a common purpose, such as transforming lives through innovation and entrepreneurship, allows to be the platform that today's entrepreneurs need when the world has changed. Thank you very much, and it's have been a pleasure to share some of what we have done for the entrepreneurs of Latin America. See you. Seventeen years ago, I started an IT company in Uruguay that we sold to Technicis, a bigger company in Latin America. We moved fast throughout Latin America and now we are focusing in North America. So for that, we look for a city to, to establish our base and grow from them to Canada and the US. So we did our homeworks. We establish a selection criteria, we fo focus on reliability, on talent pool, on ecosystem, and we go out there to search for that city. And here we are in Toronto. I know you are doing the same, trying to look for a place to establish, to invest in, and grow from them to the rest of the world. So I think you are taking the same criteria we use on, at that time to select your country, your city to establish, to invest in. And I'm sure some of the fundamental criteria we use are the same you are considering now. Talent pool, infrastructure readiness, access to your target market, government and ecosystem supports, among others. And when moving to LATAM, I would add aspects like reliability, long-term policy, quality of life, etc. So I wanted to share with you three criteria that I think are critical, are key for your selection. And it is reliability, infrastructure readiness and access to market, and talent pool. I want to know that the overall rules will stay for a while, that they are transparent and that we compete in a fair ecosystem. You and me as entrepreneurs expect that these business rules of engagement are state policies. Then we can focus on our business. How does Uruguay fare in terms of reliability in Latin America? Let's see. Number one in democracy index. Number one in low corruption. Number one in civil liberties index. Number one in rule of law index. The government offers structures, law, and procedures to be an easy business country. Long-term incentives are there to help local and foreign companies to develop their business from Uruguay to the world. We have free zone law since 1988, investment law, law since 1998, tax exception for IT export activities since 2007, and the establishment of a national agency focusing on supporting research and innovation in 2007. All these regulations and institutions build a structural long-term foundation upon which we can expand our projects. We know our business, we know the why and the who, now we need the how. And for that, nothing better 
than an MVP tested in a controlled environment. Uruguay is a small country and that makes it ideal for trials and testing. We have just a few layers in the business networking arena to reach relevant contacts, even if we need access to academia, the government of, or the private sector. Back in 2003, my company built its first security product, a two-factor authentication platform. It was an innovative solution hard to promote from a small company like ours. Very few banks in the world had incorporated that concept and ever, even fewer in Latin America. At that moment, because of the market size, we were already known by MBA and Robank. They trust us and try our software. And it was a success. And after that, so did Scotiabank. And after that, HSBC. Quite a fit for a startup. The same we did with our first product for online banking in 2010. And in 2012, we already had some customers abroad and we decided to push harder. We ran for financial aid and received government funds to support our internationalization plan. These experiences are found every day in an entrepreneur ecosystem in Uruguay. We find it everywhere when we talk with investors or entrepreneurs. We execute an MVP, validate it in the local market, and then jump to the world. And what happened when the coronavirus hit Uruguay? The government declared the sanity emergency and started working in different measures the same day the first cases were confirmed. The government agency for innovation and research opened programs to incentive and support innovation and creativity to work in different areas related to the pandemic. Economic support for the development and production of serological tests for technological development applications and devices to fight the COVID-19, for rapid design and manufacture of respirators, for creative ideas to alleviate the quarantine, for the study of the impact of the COVID. In a public-private effort, a group of companies and the government created coronavirus.ui, an app to help citizens consult in case of possible symptoms and eventually refers to the corresponding health provider. This app was recently updated, allowing the tracking of positive or potential COVID-19 cases nearby with the cooperation of Google and Apple. Uruguay became the first country in the continent to integrate COVID-19 exposure notification API in a mobile application and win the public recognition of Google and Apple executives officers. In tech industries, usually Uruguay is not the target market because it's a small market, but it's a platform. Uruguay has access to the biggest markets in, Lat in Latin America in just few hours flight and instant access throughout the best connectivity infrastructure in Latin America. We have some marine fiber that connects Uruguay, Brazil and the US. More than 75% of households have an internet connection and more than 55% with fiber. All elementary school, secondary school, high school and universities are connected to the internet, more than 60% with fiber. In 2018, Uruguay was invited to join the then D5 group, the world's leading digital government group, along with Canada. Uruguay was the first Latin American country to join the group. Talking about access, we are located in a privileged time zone, four hours ahead of Vancouver, one hour ahead of Toronto, four hours behind London. All that platform was already in place with content and tools long before the pandemic hit Uruguay. Companies of different industries were able to continue working online thanks to that. We at Technicis decided to move remote on Friday and on Monday next week we were all working from home. Last but not least, I would like to review with you how talent looks like in Uruguay. We already talked about some of the initiatives the government has been deploying for several years to build the skills and knowledge we need to implement the economy of talent we pretend to develop. We have free access to education at all levels, wide access to continual learning programs and workforce skills transformation. 
we are building a new generation of native digital people and transform workforce. In 2007, Plan Saival started to provide computers with internet access and digital content without any cost to all elementary school students. As we already saw, this platform, platform turnout was vital in the continual learning of students when school had to shut the doors. Uruguay has the highest literacy rate in Latin America. 82% of students and graduates talk English and 43% talk Portuguese. 60% of u universities students work and study at the same time. Many educational programs are supported by the academy, the government and the private sector. In the current critical context, starting last month, an agreement was signed to train at least 25 100 people in global services that are now at high demand, like corporate services, IT services, among others. And we are eager to receive international talent. The government has established a fast-track procedure of 10 days to grant visa and residency to investors, managers, personnel of foreign companies and their families. This is not all. This is just part of what Uruguay has to offer you. I encourage you to learn more about Uruguay. You have the Consulate of Uruguay here in Toronto, and obviously you can contact me. I will be happy to help you. To wrap it up, I leave you with this short video. Being smart is being with talented people. Being smart is being high-tech. Being smart is being connected. Being smart is innovating. Being smart is safe. Uruguay, a smart decision. Uruguay has quickly become a major offshoring destination. access to Brazil and Spanish-speaking countries, cultural affinity and convenient time zone, highly skilled and multilingual talent, investment grade rating and equitable economic growth, social and political stability, Easy for business. Outstanding tax benefits for investors. And a great place to live. Why Uruguay? Because it is a smart decision.